Welcome to the Experience Podcast. My name is Dennis. My name is Dennis Miller, and today I have with me... I am Neil Miller. And uh, today we're going to be talking about, well, first of all, uh, the Experience Podcast has four core values, and those are facts, inspiration, empowerment, and transformation. And uh, today we're going to be talking about emotions and states of being and how those affect our lives and, uh, and so forth. So uh, the word emotion comes from Latin and it actually means to move out, to remove, and agitate. So is there something that you'd like to elaborate on the, uh, the definition of emotion? I like that definition. Um, I could add some basic emotions to that. Um, so I have a few here, such as uh, happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, anger, and surprise. Those are some very basic emotions that we uh, feel. And I do have another definition that I can add to that. It is... Uh, a definition from um, Oxford Dictionary and they say that emotions are biological states associated with all of the nerve systems brought on by neurophysiological changes variously associated with thoughts feelings behavioral responses and a degree of pleasure or displeasure there is uh, currently no scientific consensus on a definition of emotion. So it's up in the air, even for scientists. Wow. That's incredible. So basically, that is incredible. basically they haven't even been able to prove to that the, emotions are real. They, they know that they're real, but they do not have a set definition for emotion. They have no good way to explain it, basically. That's the best way they, they can explain it. Interesting. Very. So they have no way of measuring happiness or fear. Correct. That's incredible. Um, something else that I have written down on emotions is we feel emotions when we are a human doing. So when we're doing something. Yes. And a state of being is when we just are, when we are a, a human, when we're just being. When we're a human being instead of a human doing. Yes. So it'd be more of the noun and not the verb sense. Right on. Okay. Um, I do have, I wrote it down, there's a chart on Google that I found by Rose Gold, Goldberg and it's called the Vibration Hierarchy of Feelings and if you guys pull it up on Google you can actually see it's got a spiral and it's got a downward spiral and it's got an upward spiral. Um, and on the upward spiral, all the way on the top of that list, they have, uh, again, this is the vibration hierarchy of feelings. So I feel like some of these are emotions and some of these may be a state of being. But I'd like to read these just so that we kind of have a, a basis of where they fall in the, in, um, in our daily lives and also in the, in the vibrational um, frequency. Sure. So the top of one is, uh, that Rose Goldberg has is joy and it's love. And this is actually going at the highest frequency down to the lowest. So it's from joy, love, empowered, passion, eagerness, happiness, enthusiasm, optimism, hopefulness, belief, c 
contentment, positive expectations. And then the neutral one is boredom. And then from there it goes uh, more towards a downward spiral. And after that it's pessimism, frustration, irritation, impatience, doubt, worry, anger, rage, hatred, jealousy, guilt, insecurity, and powerlessness. Um, what, as I was reading those, like, what, uh, what did you gather from that? What I gathered from that is, um, you definitely want to stay above boredom. Um, because af after boredom, they got, they went south real fast. And so I feel like, so being bored is a choice. And being bored, I believe, can be a state of being. Um, and it's a state of being that you create because instead of being bored, you can sit there and meditate and calm your mind. It's, uh, it's you choosing to be bored that creates the boredom. So <clears throat> when someone says that they're bored, it's not that they're actually bored, it's just... It's that they're choosing to be bored at that time. There is absolutely no reason to be bored in this world. Because I could simply, I could look at this pen and I could find a fascination of this pen. If like, let's say I'm bored right now. If I'm sitting in on the couch and I got this pen in my hand, I could take this pen and I could find something fascinating and do some research about where, I have no idea where this ink came from, but I bet it would eliminate my boredom when I would go and do some research on this pen. 100%. And you'd learn something in the process. After you were done being bored, you'd be smarter. So, um, on states of being, are we, do you feel pretty good on the emotions? Do you want to bring up the Latin root word? Um, I believe you mentioned something about having the definition of the origination of the word. Emotion? Correct. Yes, I did bring that up earlier, but I'll just say it again. Okay. Uh, the word emotion comes from the Latin root word of moving out, or move out, remove, and agitate. So it'd be something that would come from within that would be going out, is my understanding. That's very interesting. So you're generating the emotion within yourself and projecting it outwards. Yes. That is, that is very fascinating because of the fact that the external circumstances in your life are, according to that, the, where, it, where emotion originates from, from the Latin Greek word. So if um, let's say I run into a mailbox with, with a vehicle and, um, I feel happy because I feel happy that it hit the passenger side and didn't hit the driver's side. I feel happy that it's over there and I get to choose what I feel from inside of me. It's not, it has nothing to do with me hitting the mailbox that creates the feeling within myself. It is after I hit the mailbox, now I generate the feeling that I want to feel within myself and I can project that outwards and I can have a good situation. I can, so let's remove good and bad from the conversation and I can have the feeling that I desire in that moment um, from what I generate within myself. So are you saying that it's not the accident or the mailbox that generated that feeling, but rather you chose? Correct. So did you, that's very, very, very powerful. Correct. So you are 100% responsible 
for the emotion. For your feeling, correct. So it's not the mailbox that created that emotion. Not in the slightest. Because the, the mailbox or the vehicle had no feeling. The external <laughs> circumstances had no merit on the internal condition. That's a very, very powerful analogy. I like that. So, um, <clears throat> going to states of being, um, a state of being kind of, there's a, a couple definitions I have here. Um, they're coming from yourdictionary.com. And they say that a state of being is, are like, conditions or situations that exist so they're existing they're doing nothing but they're existing similar to what you were saying with emotion you're doing this is saying that there are conditions or situations that exist um the state of being are in a act inactive state zero action is performed they also are not usually progressive so you're being you're in that state. They express, that's a one. So it's it's got like various definitions, like one, two, three, four to six. So one is state of being is an expression. It's a e equivalence or existence, kind of like the exist. It can be a sensory state or a cognitive state, a thinking state um it can be number four it can be a possession state where you possess you're in a state of being of possession um it can be a state of being of an emotional state so what i'm and then the last one is it can be a state of being of measurement i'm not sure how that one pertains but I really want to touch on the emotional states because the way this is saying it, it's saying you can be in a state of being in various different forms. So yes, it can pertain to emotions. Um, your emotions are not necessarily, they aren't states of being, but you can be in that emotion. You can be in a state of that emotion if you so choose. So if you because we know that where attention goes, energy flows. So if you so choose to put your attention to that emotion, now you can be in that emotion. So is what you're saying is, is I can be in a car wreck and I can hurt my finger, but at the same time, I can be grateful. I can, I can be in a state of gratitude because I didn't. It was just my pinky. And not only that, your hand is still attached. Your hand is still attached to your arm, which is attached to your shoulder. You're still breathing. You're in your car being able to cognitively think. When you start to count your blessings, you realize there's so many blessings. So that's like a state of being um so a lot of uh like ralph smart says um he's a youtube influencer um you can look him up if you're so inclined so what he says is that we need to let go of the ego system and embrace the ego ecosystem we're so focused on the ego system, the, our mind, our thinking mind, we're so focused on the ego system that we sometimes forget that we're part of an ecosystem. We're all one system. And we need to embrace the ecosystem and let go of the ego system. So instead of <clears throat> competing, cooperating. Cooperation is the way of nature. Competition is the way of people is the way of the, the ego, ego. Yes. not the way of people It's the way of the ego so a quote i have from uh andy uh borswitz 
he he brought something up um about money and so he said it a little bit like this and he says it would be nice to spend billions on schools and roads but right now that money is desperately needed for political ads andy borswich and uh that's that goes kind of back to a similar video that we did on clairvoyance to have a clear vision for the future do we want to keep putting money into political ads or are we going to start spending it on schools and roads what is our clear vision for the future and and what is the emotion that we're going to feel in that future so basically what you're saying is if we get into that state of being that we see in the future that we want to man that the kind of world that we want to live in if we can be in that state of being now and have that clear vision is that what you're what i'm understanding continue so when we are in that state of being uh, and in and we have that clear vision that's when we create the cooperation instead of the competition and we have an ecosystem and not an ecosystem yes but it's about feeling the feeling so i want you to imagine that you just won the lottery yeah Woo! you just won the lottery keep that Holy feeling shit. keep that feeling all right keep it and now that feeling is what you need to feel every day because when you feel that inspiration and that awesome feeling of just you just feel that inspiration and gratitude and, and bliss and that is the feeling that you want to feel to create that version of you in the future. Not necessarily winning the lottery, but being able to feel that feeling every single day, in every moment. So an important thing I want to bring up is, um, so, all right, so now you feel the feeling that you want to feel for your future, correct? Yes. And so now you feel anger over somebody or something so now you're you're externally being triggered all right so so just thought experiment so so now you feel anger it is valid for you to feel anger if something does not sit right with you and you feel anger or guilt or shame it is important to feel that a lot of a lot of what we do today is we we push those to the side say be a man stop stop feeling shame stop feeling guilt um man up smile that is not how to take care of yourself um it's important to feel those negative emotions, but what, what to do then is you can feel them and recognize that you feel them. And now that you've put your attention to it, now put your attention elsewhere and you can let them go. I think also it's very important right there. What you just said is to being the observer uh, of that, those negative emotions and being detached. And then most of the time there's a lesson that we can learn when those things arise yes so when we learn the lesson very likely in the future we may not we may feel those emotions again but not from a particular um situation or event that was that priorly triggered yes. that emotion yes so then we can move on to other lessons sure and so you said to detach from the emotion um attachment is the key to all suffering that is a quote by Sadhguru. so when we detach from the emotion we can see the lesson we're no longer suffering from the emotion 
because we're detached. Attachment is the key to all suffering. So when we detach, we're no longer suffering the emotion of guilt, anger, whatever we were priorly feeling because we have put our attention elsewhere and not on that emotion. So, um, I'd like to uh, talk about what COVID means and what it means. So, I want to clarify something before we get to that. And what that is, is that we, the people, are the 99%. We are the majority. We, we make up 99% of the world. And the 1%, the cabal, the inorganic ones, whatever you want to call them that control this matrix, um, they have power through controlling you through your negative emotions, through guilt, through fear, through anger, and through shame. That's how you're being controlled in this matrix world. So, all right, so now that we understand that we are the 99%, I want to talk about the 1%'s vision of the future. And this is what COVID means to the 1%. COVID, C-O-V-I-D, means to the 1%, Certificate of Vaccination ID. Certificate of Vaccination ID. Certificate of Vaccination ID. Your ID, what they want for you is an ID that is going to be your certificate of vaccination. Now that is your ID. If you are not vaccinated and you do not have that certificate, guess who's not getting groceries today? Because you need that certificate of vaccination ID along with your mask to go participate particip participate in the matrix. So the solution is to detach from the matrix and to learn to grow your own vegetables, grow your own foods. Um, you can talk and speak about these things, but when you speak about them and the next day you go to a job that you hate and you put your energy and your focus into the matrix, you're part of the problem, not part of the solution. So become part of the solution. So that is the, what the 1% vision of the future is. The 99%, what it means to the people is COVID is creating our vision in detail. Creating our vision in detail. Creating our vision in detail. And what this, this is very powerful. We're at, a, we're at a time when we have technology, we have vehicles, we have any knowledge that we so wish to look up in our pocket. And we, the people, the 99% um, have all the technological, the right people, the right, correct resources to create anything that we so wish to create because of what is available to us. Um, in the 1800s, it was not so. You got a shovel, and you got your basic farm tools and you got your neighbors and that's what you got you can create with that that's what you get to create we have so much today that we can create with and it's why we get to create our vision in detail and the one percent knows this and they can't have that which is the exact reason we're in the state of the world that we're in uh today So what you, from what I'm hearing is, is that if we create our vision in detail and we are in a state of being that's in the positive states of being, that's, 
that's where we create the world that we want to create. Correct. And it, and when we do that, so now when we're creating our vision in detail, um, where's your attention at? On that which I'm looking to create. Your attention is on creating your vision in detail. So now that you're focusing on creating your vision in detail, you're no longer putting your attention to the 1% cabals inorganic ones certificate of vaccination id vision of the future because your energy is via your attention is going to your vision of the future that you're creating so and just to clarify their vision of the future is fear anger division hate uh, love is their kryptonite. When we, when we show love, it's, it's like, it's not only like holding up a shield, but it's like having a transparent body to where you can just walk right through the shit. Love is their kryptonite. Where we become Jedis of love. Sir. I see that a lot with uh, with the current state of everything of the world that we're in. I've seen just in the past six months, I've seen a lot of, I mean, breakups and um, people becoming very depressed and very suicidal. And if we can get these people to, or I'm not looking to do anything to anybody. But if we as humanity can, like you said, create our vision in detail, then we start living in enthusiasm and we become empowered. 100%. Instead of being in a state of fear and hate, division, Instead of that, we're in a state of love, peace, enthusiasm, joy. On that, uh, everybody out there, stay well, stay healthy, breathe deeply without a mask. One love.